they start clicking on all cylinders. And so, plus, I kind of credit it to the, the Packers are still, we're still, we're kind of in a prevent defense because they knew they were going to have to score and they were going to have to score quick and they were going to have to throw the ball. Right. But still, Marshawn was able to establish himself in that running game and he was able to get going. Yeah, 25 carries for 157 yards, one touchdown. And he's, I mean, the guy just really go ahead and put a stamp on his name where he called him Beast Mode. They, he just and the catch he made the catch too. The catch yeah. was the big one. The catch to the catch to me was bigger than the runs and everything. That one catch was what because they were trying to hit it earlier in the game, mm-hmm. and you could say he got interfered with whatever because I think he got interfered with on that catch on the on the first one. But this one they just needed to establish that guy catching the ball. And as soon as they were hitting that pass, I mean I'm just sitting there looking at you going, this is ridiculous. <laughs> I like I said, I just posted I'm my, like, there is no way that you just posted that they were done, and then you're going, oh my god, it is like, what, what did I, it. like, it's just like, what did I watch? I was, it was just so much to take in, but it was, it was a sign. It was different to see. It was like, what did I just watch? This is crazy. Give credit like, to this is retorted. It is. <laughs> Doug Baldwin, Curse had it was having a rough game, but he made one catch that kind of helped him. He made the ca- he made the catch that everybody forgets. Like I said, like I told you during the game. They win this game. Nobody will remember Russell Wilson threw four interceptions. They'll remember he ran one in for a touchdown. They'll remember he threw that two point conversion. They'll remember he threw the game when the pass. No one's talking about him throwing four interceptions now anymore. Everybody's talking about what he did at the end of the game. And Curse was the same way. Curse was dropping, fumbling, dropped, doing everything. And then he redeemed himself with that one catch. Because no one talked about his 19 drops that he had during the game. Now we're all talking about the one he caught. Right. That he was interfered with. And one more question on regards to the Seattle Seahawks, and then we'll move to Green Bay. Give credit to Richard Sherman because he played with the way he, he had played. He, his, his, he couldn't use his left arm. They said he had an uh, elbow sprain. Mm-hmm. But right during the game, though, as soon as he took the hit, I was like, oh. I was like, that don't look good because he had it stuck in between the receiver, and then uh, Cam Chancellor came in and nailed him. In. So you could see where. Where it hurt, and I'm like, oh, man. But he played with basically no left arm and still was making tackles and didn't care and put his body on the line. Him and Aaron Rodgers, I think I said it during the game, him and Aaron Rodgers to me showed the most toughness out of any people. It was amazing how tough they were. Plus, Earl Thomas as well. Separated his shoulder, came right back into the game, played the rest of the game. So these guys, these guys showed what toughness is about. I remember year. What was it, a couple, three years ago that Jay Cutler sat out the game because his, he had a boo-boo on his knee. Mm-hmm. Man, you're in the playoffs. You're in a championship game. You don't sit out. <laughs> you don't sit out these kind of games. You, you, you play. Reese Jones, you played, the, played with the same, played almost a whole year with the same injury that he had, uh, that Jay Cutler had during that game. Right. So, you can see the toughness in some of these players. Aaron Rodgers was out there playing with a torn calf muscle. I got so much respect for Richard Sherman for toughening it out because easily he could have set it out. He held his arm in a stationary position and was still making tackles. He actually hit hit his elbow and was screaming for pain, but got up and got and get the, did the next play. Everybody look at this guy. Yeah, you know he's telling me he's a loud mouth and he goes off and say what's on his mind, which is nothing wrong with that. Just say what's on your mind, but you gotta you gotta show it on the field too. And he she absolutely showed the amount of guts to go ahead and play with an injury. And no, you know what? This game is online. My quarterback's throwing four interceptions, and we actually are coming back. That that that, that whole defense can say whatever they want. Right. They. People, people hate them. People don't like Seattle because they're brash, because they're they they talk a lot and everything. Guess what? They can, because they, unlike other people that we've seen talk and everything, they back it up. They can do this kind of stuff because they're the best in the NFL right now. So, dang right, they can say whatever you want. You can love them, hate them, do whatever you want to, but they they're allowed to say whatever they want to because they're being factual. Right. They're not saying nothing that's not obvious, that shouldn't be obvious to everybody. They are legit that good. Yeah. Totally. That whole that whole team should be able to say whatever they want to. Right. They appreciate it. She's online. They're down 16-7 in the third quarter, and they 
got five minutes left and they made this miraculous run against overtime. So, that defense, the, the part that everybody, that defense held the Packers when all that stuff was in. They held the Packers to where it could have been 30 to 7 at half. It could have been 30 to 7 at half. But they held it. So you you got to credit that defense. You have to credit and give the majority of the credit to them because they kept it in there long enough to where Russell and them were able to do everything. Well, they figure it out. Right. Yeah. On the flip side, the Green Bay Packers. Man. Did they blow this? Questionable play calling at the end of the game. Everybody goes back to the first quarter. When you're playing a team like Seattle, you take points. It don't matter if you're getting three or seven. You take the points when you're playing a team like Seattle. Because Seattle, we already know, is not the most potent offense in the league. So you're thinking if you get some points on the board and you can start getting the lead, you can get out in front of them. You, you you won't have to worry about it. Plus, that defense, you never know when you're going to be able in that position to get to score points. So you have to do it whenever you can. But there was some questionable play call out towards the end. Uh, the guy diving down after the fourth interception instead of running. He could have legit ran to almost field goal range. He could have got Green Bay into field goal range, and that would have iced the game. But he went down instead. Which I've seen the thing where they had Julius Peppers telling him to get down. And I know there's sometimes injury, but that, that shit very rarely happens. But that, th- those little things during that game made you think about what was going on in the past. I don't think they blew it per se, but I think they really didn't help themselves either. But you can't really call it, can't really call it a blown game. Yeah. Because Seattle had a lot to do with you blowing it. <laughs> they did, yeah, they did get the stuff they needed to. But the special teams, I, I, I just, you gotta let Jordan Russell catch that ball. Oh, yeah, but like, but we're not in that position to be able to say <laughs> that it was a, it was stupid on his part. It was dumb. We, when you're in a football game or any type of sporting event, your instinct takes over. Not what you were taught, what you're doing, anything like that. We always, we always talk about quarterbacks and their throwing motions and all this kind of stuff like that. Well, when you're in the game, you revert back to what you know and to what and what your instincts tell you to do. Yeah. His instinct was to go and get the football. He completely forgot about what his assignment was, but his instinct was to go and get the football. Mm-hmm. Should he not win with his instinct? Sure. Should he have done what he was supposed to do? Sure. But we can't derate him for doing what his instinct would tell him to do. Now, what we can derate him for was not having the damn hands to catch the football. That's what you can derate him for. You can't derate him for his hustle or for what he tried to do, but you can derate him for the way he went about doing it. Missing the ball is completely no avoid. You could, you still should have caught it. Yeah, I was looking at it too. Now, but if he would have done his job, you're right. Jordan right. Nelson was standing directly right behind him and would have been able to catch the ball. Yeah. But during the game, were you watching that? Did you see that? Did you see it, or did you see it until after the thing was already over when they were like, "Well, he should have been blocking." And Jordan Nelson, we didn't see it during that. The only thing we saw was the dude trying to get the ball, and it hit him on the head. Man. <laughs> What a, what a what a turn of events when that happened. Now, you see, I'm, I'm thinking of the whole. Remember the, the San Francisco thing, the punt return some years with that. Like it, was, it wasn't too long ago, but it was just like a little blurry play at the moment where you just botched it. This is a botch situation too. Oh, where it hit him in the foot. Yeah, yeah where it fell. Kyle right Williams, there. I think that's his name. Yeah, where yeah. It hit him right in the foot. Yeah. I, I just had reminiscences of that again. I was like, man, that just. That sucks, man. If you're that, if you're that player, like, it's, 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 yeah, it, it, it's a heart, it's a heartbreaking feeling. It is, man. You're you're sitting there, and you know, and you know Seattle Street, so you're like, please get a stop, please get a stop, and you shrink in, you shrink into a hole. So as much as you know, you can't you can't pin on that one guy because you your defense should be able to stop a roll and see how that's going down the field now. But you know, maybe that was their game plan, let them score. But I thought. I thought Sherman did a terrible job managing the game there at the end. Yeah, he, he, he could have yeah, did a lot better, but it is what it is. So, But Aaron Rodgers, we talked about Aaron Rodgers, he was playing with injury, and because I was the one in the podcast that said there was going to be a blowout because I was like, Aaron Rodgers not playing healthy. Kevin said this game was going to be pretty close. 
on me on our hand, like this is gonna be a lot of things gonna be fair. I think I think Seattle's gonna smash them. I actually missed the score by like four points. But I gotta say, man, I'm, even with Aaron Rodgers on a hurt leg, he was pretty darn impressive. I mean, yeah, he he got. I'm sitting here looking at his stats here. Did he get sacks? Yeah, he got sacked one time for seven yards. Once. Yeah. So I mean, even but with he that, was hurry. Yeah. So he's he, hurt, and then on the. On the one where you were like, run, run. I'm like, he can't. <laughs> I'm like, he can't. There, there, there's a difference between Aaron Rodgers. Back, Aaron Rodgers before would have ran for 30 yards on that one. You were like, run, run. I'm like, he can't run, dude. He's going to I'm like, he just can't do it. And he couldn't do it. All right, man. Give me your odds here, man. Give me a percentage right. of Randall Cobb. Do you think he in the, is in a Green Bay Packers uniform next year? About 68% that he stays. Because I, I, I think they have money, but I don't know where they want to they where they want to go with it. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. The rest of the percentage is he's in the Jacksonville uniform. There you go, Kevin's got all greens over there, and I'm sure Kevin is okay with having Mr. Cobb over here. I'm okay with having a lot of people over here. So. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what, man, this is, so as you see, uh, I will play the clip at the beginning of the pod, and I'm sure you heard the podcast, I'm going to edit it in, but Kevin did predict this Super Bowl here, and give, give Notch Dumbs over here props, because he did predict that it was going to happen, and he's got his streak going. Three years in a row. Three years in a row. Now if they win, that'll be definitely be three years in a row, that so, I'm calling the winner. So uh, Kevin is definitely uh, on a roll here. So yeah, I'm, 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 um, we'll, we'll discuss more of it during the week. We're going to try to get on the defense side of the ball, the side of the ball. I mean, Kevin make predictions, Super Bowl MVP predictions. And what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to actually get, a, get some people thoughts on it. I want to hear y'all people thoughts on it. I'm going to get a recording and ask people who you think is going to win the Super Bowl that way. You know, we'll play that and you hear the voice of, you know, yourself. Well, even here like in that. the barbershop, there's been a difference of opinion on who's going to win the Super Bowl. So I'm I'm gonna get everybody on a, on that podcast and make Seattle, sure everybody Seattle. take a listen and get that checked we out. We at least so. got one another smart person here. Maybe. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Baldwin Court Podcast. We'll take a brief intermission and return shortly.